Welcome to Spotlight on Born. I'm Linda Zern, your host, and the spotlight today is on the Common Core Standards. And I have with me as my guests uh, Agatha Bodwell Linda. and Marianne Aliagro. Hi, Linda. And both of you are from the Liberty Chalkboard. So maybe we can just, um, or you can just say a little bit about yourselves. And I'm also a member of the Liberty Chalkboard and how we sort of got together and, and what kinds of issues that we've been working on and how we got into this. Yeah. Agatha, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, we started out a group, of, a group of people that actually love American history. We were a little concerned about uh, the education that our kids are getting, so we started meeting around Marianne's kitchen table and talking about how we can you know, provide a little extra emphasis on American history. So we started out actually by doing these newsletters um, that we were giving to libraries and various other organizations. Mm -hmm. This one, I think, is about Washington, George Washington. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened was we were very focused on this. We wanted to coordinate a camp um, over the summer teaching American history. And I found out that my daughter's school was going to be um, adopting the Common Core Standards. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking into it, and I brought my research to my friends at the Liberty Chalkboard, and we all started doing more research, and it quickly became our main mission to find out more and to warn other parents about it. Absolutely, I'll go along with that. <laughs> a wonderful explanation of that. And I know you've put a lot of information on the Liberty Chalkboard uh, website, so people yes. can just go there. If we don't cover everything today, yes. they can go to libertychalkboard.org and get all of the um, sites and the websites and um, yes, and the newsletters and everything. The, the newsletters are downloadable <clears throat> as PDFs, and we also have a, a page called the School Feed, which is very up to date on um, firsthand articles of what is going on concerning Common Core in Massachusetts schools and also around the country, so that we have a great example of of uh, how this is manifesting itself. We also have resource materials that we can down that people can download to use to help educate other people about Common Core. And why don't we just talk a little bit about what Common Core is and how it came to be? Okay, I, I'll, I'll do that. I'll start with a little bit of history. Um, it, it seems that um, for quite some time, and um, the federal government has been interested in our public school education. And uh, way back when perhaps before most of you were born, people in the audience, <laughs> um, there actually um, were scripture that was being used in our public schools. And if you would just grab me the New England Primer real quick. Our uh, own state mandated New England Primer actually is uh, quite full of it. And we had morality in our schools. And what happened was in 1963 there was a, a Supreme Court decision where the federal government, well the Supreme Court, ordered that all states remove any reference to scripture in their schools and in their curriculum. Uh, there were at least 11 states that were um, surpassed by the force of the federal government and forced to do this. Massachusetts was one of them, actually, mm -hmm. in 1963. What happened were, was after that, there were always consequences and SAT scores began to plummet. I guess discipline went down, the curriculum changed quite a bit, and they started teaching other things to the children, like sex education, for example. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, over the years, what has happened in, the, in um, when that happened, the federal government decided they needed to come in and correct that. And so they started the Federal Department of Education, which Agatha wants to mention, I think, something about that to us in a moment. Yeah. About that. Okay, she'll mention that in just a, m a moment or two. Uh, that was in 1977, and it led to more control over our local schools. And with um, the implementation of what's called outcome-based education and high-stakes testing, it was no longer what we taught the children, it was would they achieve a specific outcome that the educators were looking for. Mm -hmm. And so that manifested itself in tests like our MCAS. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. happened in the classrooms were they started teaching to the test. Mm -hmm. Now I mention all that, it sounds long and drawn, but it is actually the predecessors to the Common Core. Because mm -hmm. that's pretty much that program, but now directly influenced and run by the Federal Department of Education through agencies that we'll discuss based 100% on this high stakes testing that the teachers will be forced to uh, teach the children to. And Congress, uh, as far as I know, never voted on this. No. no. <laughs> 
And you know, it was basically a bribe to the states um, using the race to the top application. Mm -hmm. And so states that signed the application that they would uh, start implementing a common core uh, standards rated higher on the application and they were all competing for race to the top funds. This was back in 2010 when the economy was you know, was in the tank and everyone, every state was desperate for money. Mm -hmm. So they used a stimulus money actually to bribe the states into accepting mm -hmm. the Common Core standards and therefore 45 states uh, accepted it. The standards weren't even done yet. They were still, I think, believe in a first rough draft. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what happened. So nobody voted for it. It was given to the governors, and I believe it was a decision of the governors and the, the uh, education departments in every state. No state legislature voted on this whatsoever. No. And it does say that they were created by the Governors Association, but that wasn't really the governors. Right. Right. <laughs> that, that is the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School Officers are trade associations. They're based in D.C. They live in D.C. They are not people from your state, <laughs> maybe once they've lived in your state. And also they, um, what came from the National Governors Association was an, uh, they started an organization called Achieve, which is really the um, organization that was charged with creating these standards, technically creating them. And that was funded also by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And as, as you'll see when you go through this, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has funded this uh, venture from top to bottom because they have much to gain. They have much to gain from it. And other companies do as well. Yes, other big companies are involved as well. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And I think, uh, Agatha, how much money did Massachusetts uh, get? Uh, well, let's see, $4.3 billion of stimulus money was used to bribe these states into accepting Common Core standards. Massachusetts, in its first round of the Race to the Top application, actually did not check the box that said we will accept uh, the Common Core standards because Massachusetts, as most of us know, already has the best education in in the nation, we mm -hmm. were number one on all scores. So Massachusetts did not check the box. We came in uh, uh, 12 out of 13 out of all the states that applied. So therefore, in the second round of the application process, Massachusetts did check the box that they would implement common st core standards. Mm -hmm. And we immediately shot to number one, and we received $250 million which is interesting because most estimates say that it's going to cost a heck of a lot more to actually implement those standards in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. The Pioneer Institute estimates that across the country it's going to cost $16 billion to implement Common Core. So the $4 billion that they offered was really chump change. It's really another federal, you know, unfunded mandate. And, and, and like yeah. you said before, the standards weren't even created yet. Some of them right. are created now that you can get them on the web, uh, the website yes. or the internet. Uh, but and some time, aren't finished yet. Right, at the time, <clears throat> right now it's just math and ELA standards. At the time, yeah. a lot of people from Massachusetts were uh, pushing yeah. back saying, hey, we've already got the best standards. We don't need the, these mm -hmm. standards. And some folks were saying, well, we're going to base these new Common Core standards on the Massachusetts standards. Mm -hmm. However, that, that just didn't happen. It no. didn't happen because didn't happen. one of the creators of our old standards was on the validation committee for the new standards and it's completely foreign. It resembles nothing of what Massachusetts right. taught. And Marianne referred to a statement that you have uh, about the um, Constitution. Yeah, the well Department it's completely of Education. unconstitutional. It uh, breaks three federal laws. I'll tell you which laws it breaks. It breaks the uh, General Education Provisions Act, Public Law 10, uh, 103-33, Section 432. It breaks the Department of Education Organization Act and the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. Um, the 1979 law that established the Education Department forbids it from exercising any direction, supervision, or control over the curriculum or program of instruction of any school or school system. The ESA, as amended, goes further. It says, no funds provided to the education department may be used to endorse, approve, or sanction any curriculum designed to be used in kindergarten through 12th grade. And um, it's just amazing because Arnie Duncan now goes around uh, talking about Common Core. So when they say these are state standards, they're obviously not. They're federal standards. They were used 
with federal money. We're using federal money to bribe right. states. They're mm -hmm. threatening states mm -hmm. that don't want to implement Common Core by withholding Title I funds. Mm -hmm. They are using the, um, what's the thing that uh, President Bush did? No Child Left Behind. No Child Left Behind Act waivers as bribes. They're offering waivers mm -hmm. to people that uh, say they will implement Common Core. Um, in fact, Jimmy Carter, Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, Joseph Califano, opposed the creation of this new cabinet position, the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Education. He warned in its most extreme form, national control of curriculum is a form of national control of ideas. And this is where mm -hmm. we're headed with this. And that's, that's sure. what it seems mm. yes. to be doing. That's yeah. right. Marianne, you're a biologist um, yes. down at MBL. I am. So, uh, when you look at these kinds of things, you look at it from a different perspective. Oh, I do. I've got to give you an example of that. <laughs> Let's take a look at our national uh, next generation science standards, which supposedly, well, they're supposedly not uh, part of the core yet, although they are. They started, uh, they started training biology teachers. I know personally because I spoke to several of them mm -hmm. this summer. They had to stop. Apparently, I've spoken to them since, and they had to stop trying to implement them. And I wonder why. So let me just give you a slight example of one of the, one of um, their thoughts. The cross-cutting concepts. First of all, that doesn't even. I don't even know what that means in science. But anyway, the cross-cutting concepts of patterns, cause and effect, symptoms, systems and models, interdependence of science, engineering and technology and influence of engineering, technology, and science on society and the natural world are called out as organizing concepts for these disciplinary core ideas. That's for kindergarten. That's one of our science standards in the premise to the kindergarten standards. Now I ask you, can you even understand a word of that? I can't. Right. It is totally incomprehensible. I've been a scientist for 30 years. It is totally incomprehensible. And I can imagine that's why teachers are having trouble with this. Mm -hmm. And students will never be able to get it. Uh, the other problem with this type of thing is they don't cover physics. They don't cover chemistry. Um, children are going to be so debilitated in, in mathematics, not being able to reach algebra. And um, they won't be able to do these things. They won't. Now, we set up a forum down in Falmouth about a year ago. Yes. And we had, um, I wasn't there, but you had Sandra Stotsky. Yes, and, she's wonderful. And she was speaking, and she, do you want to talk a little bit about what she said and who she was and what she said about the Common Core Standards? Sure. Well, she was on the validation committee, as Agatha said. She was also the head of, um, in Massachusetts. She was one of the main architects of the ELA standards. Right, of our original. It's the, the standards that had plummeted Massachusetts to the top of the nation. Exactly. So <laughs> she's well qualified to discuss these things. And she herself said that the English language arts standards were not comprehensible. Mm -hmm. They um, would be very bad for the children. They remove most of their literature. Mm -hmm. And they're replaced with informational texts out of context. And that makes it extremely difficult. So even if they give the child a piece of the, say, the Gettysburg Address, they don't say what it is. They don't explain it historically. And then they ask them to comprehend or understand three sentences in it. It, it just absolutely makes no sense. And if you go look at them yourself, you'll become frustrated quite quickly. And she also said that 30% uh, of the English curriculum was, was going to be literature that's down quite quite yes. a lot from what it used to be. So it would be only 30%. And she thought that meant that uh, kids could not read a whole book, that they would be reading these condensed versions of literature yes. as well. And actually, I looked online at their standards, and I'm, it's not even condensed. They would be reading a couple of paragraphs from a book, wow. or maybe a chapter of a book, again, with no context. Mm -hmm. So the kids are going to have no ability to use their imaginations, no ability to um, grow their creativity by reading literature. I mean, literature is essential. It's essential. 
So Sandra actually refused to sign off on the standards, um, along with uh, the only mathematician on the validation committee, James Milgram. He said that the standards are two years behind international expectations by the eighth grade and fall further behind in grades eight to 12. The math standards downgrade the years when algebra and geometry are to be taught. Um, and in quotes, he said, it's almost a joke to think students would be ready for math at a university. Um, and this brings me to uh, something that was caught on camera. One of the architects of the math standards actually said out loud, well, when we say this prepares kids for careers and college, we mean two-year community colleges. Hmm. We never meant four-year colleges. So wait till parents hear this. And really and fully understand <laughs> That it. in Massachusetts, we're preparing all of our kids to go to a community college. I mean, this is really a downgrade of our former standards. I was doing some research online, too, about the implementation of the Common Core standards. And um, they even had charts there on how to get around going through the curriculum directors. Uh, yes. to implement some of these mm -hmm. things. And they have lovely little, everything yeah. is in, they, they're not afraid to say what they mean, I suppose, or at least yeah. say what they want to do. Yes, establish routines to monitor performance and solve problems, and this is how to get around local communities and make sure that they will uh, fall for this and put their children through this program. And people can get this right online. I yes. downloaded it myself and, and ran off a few pages. That um, thanks to Achieve, this is this is from uh, Achieve itself mm -hmm. and uh, U.S. Education Delivery Institute. Sounds like a new place. Yeah. And I think I got mine from the P. Was it P P C or the Partnership for whatever the letters are? Park. Park, okay. yeah. Oh, which is the testing agency. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can tell you what that is. It's on my cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. The Partnership for Assessments of Readiness for College Careers. Yes. That's one of the high stakes testing agencies. So you could go to that website too, and they have the, the same kind of material there. Right. Yeah. And you remember, I know a lot of teachers that had said they hated testing to the MCAS exams. Mm -hmm. And when they find out that Park has been called MCAS on steroids, it's, it's I mean, horrible. it's going to be longer, more expensive. Uh, harder to to teach to I mean they're going to be spending all their days all their time basically teaching to this park test mm -hmm. so it's going to completely take all the creativity out of the classroom even the National Governors Association owns the copyright on these standards so I, I hear a lot of teachers saying oh we're gonna teach what we want and mm -hmm. we're gonna raise the standards we don't have to teach to these standards according to the National Governors Association they will graciously allow teachers to fill in 15% of whatever they want in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But technically, once you've signed on to the dotted line that you're right. going to be teaching Common Core standards, they will expect you to teach to those standards. And good luck.